Hey, hello, and welcome back to Good Knit Kisses. Today we have got a tutorial coming to you live. Uh, this tutorial is uh, on the pot holder loom, and I'm just getting set up here. Um, pardon me if you hear my <laughs> my neighbor mowing in the background. <laughs> uh, we are um, coming to you live, and uh, this replay will be available later, so if I answer any questions live, uh, it'll be towards the end. And today I am um, on series three of our potholder videos. We've already made this first one, and then the second one here. The last one we did was this um, pinwheel uh, potholder uh, also called a like a hound's tooth. People like to call that also a hound's tooth. I I, I think this one uh, looks more like the the pinwheel. And uh, today we're going to be doing a plaid one. And last time I had everyone vote on which colors we wanted, and we got fall. So now I'm going to go into the Christmas one, which is uh, apropos because we're um, apparently just skipping Thanksgiving. <laughs> uh, so no, um, we're we've got uh, green and red, and I've got a burst of a uh, yellow in here or gold. Color color and this this one is different uh, we've been working with um, 18 of one color and 18 of another color so a two color design with an even amount each but now we're going to jump into changing up the amount of colors that you have and uh, I'm going to set these to the side and uh, here is my loom uh, this is the large pot holder loom from uh, Cindy Wood looms and uh, I've got uh, 20 of these green the main color so 20 of your main color and I don't know what these colors are going to look like together We're going to have fun together today. I just thought these would be fun uh, And then so we've got 20 of those and then I've got um, eight each of my two um, uh, contrary uh, contrasting colors, so we've got red eight red and um, uh, eight yellow or gold and I'm going to set these over here all right, so um, the warp and the weave are set up the same way. Um, I'm going to set uh, the part, um, uh, I'm sorry, um, vertical up first, and then I'm going to be pulling um, from uh, right to left, from left to right. And of course, you can do it opposite um, whatever way you need. You're going to need your um, hook that came with the loom, or you can use a Tunisian hook. And uh, anyway, I just want to welcome everybody. Hey, I'm seeing a few of you guys jump on. Be sure and... Uh, Comment below. Yeah, these colors work for Thanksgiving too. Yeah, they do. They do. You're right. Uh, okay, so I'm going to actually um, take two colors of my main color and we're going to put them on the ends here. So we're going to do the first two on the, uh, on the left and the last two on the right. I'm trying not to you got a wire in here you can't see. <laughs> Try not to knock it. All right. Top to bottom. Okay, so we've got our main color here. Now we're going to go in with our next color. Uh, we can choose to put um, red uh, here. Okay, so I'm going to be putting red here and red here and then put my um, yellow on the inside. And then I'm going to be putting my main color. So I can also switch it up and choose to do that opposite and I'm just kind of glancing at what I think I want it to look like I think I want the yellow on the inside so I'm just doing this visually to kind of give me an idea just so you know it's going to kind of have this sort of look to it <laughs> all right so that's my ultra scientific approach <laughs> so I'm going to place these next two loops here so we're going to be making a three color plaid pot holder so I'm going to put red next, two loops, and yellow, two loops. And then we're going to mirror that on the right side here. Red, two loops. Make sure you mirror it so it works correctly. And then yellow, two loops. And then you're just going to fill in the main color uh, right down the middle. Okay, so you should have six of the green. Oops. I 
these cotton loops came from Cindy Wood Looms. You can also uh, get them from, I think it was uh, Harris online. They're comparable. I think it's um, a better deal. The, the more colors you get at a time, like a bigger quantity at a time, it makes it a, um, it, it makes it a, um, a better purchase. Now, I will say, last time I said, if you want to have an even number of the colors and you get them from Cindy Woodloom, they come in bags um, already pre-counted out, 18 of two different colors. You don't really have a choice, but if you get a big bag from um, Harris or whatnot, then uh, it would be, um, you would be able to pick and choose a little bit better. So I'm having to kind of pilfer some of my other samples, uh, uh, my other loop colors, just to get uh, this design going. So this looks really pretty and vibrant. It may not look as vibrant on the camera, but it's really kind of popping out. This yellow is actually pretty bright in person. So it's kind of cool. So what you want to do is you're warping your weave the same on here. So uh, the um, the same design that I'm doing here, I'm going to be weaving it in. So uh, if, if it's uh, easier for you, you can go ahead and kind of move your loops in the right order. So I'm just going to kind of do this just to make sure I'm uh, keeping up the right order because I could get lost while I'm talking here. So here we go. Just kind of laying it out. So we've got one, two, four. And I am missing two, so I've got to grab them from my other bag. I did not count those out right last night. <laughs> okay, so now that I've got this set, um, I'm going to be um, weaving. Uh, I can either stop top to do top to bottom um, or bottom to top. Uh, I'm just going to start down here, and we're just going to do the over under thing. So we're going to go under, over, all through here. So I'm keeping the bands together, the loops together, so two at a time. The, um, this one's actually going to work better. I don't know why I'm doing that here. I have to unplug this wire. It's catching me. And then we're just going to grab this one and take it under. And I've hooked it on my first peg here and hook this one on, making sure I'm not skipping anything. This first one uh, and second one, I'm, I usually try to, try to check. Okay. And then now we're just going to go opposites. Let me see if I can... Let's see if I can zoom in. Okay. And what I like about these uh, looms is, do you see how long they are and see how much um, height I can get on here? The, um, the, the pegs on the regular looms are like probably half this size for the other potholder looms, the, the metal ones, and they just don't do as well. Okay, I have to, I got to unplug this phone here. My cord keeps getting in the way. All right, so we're just going to go opposite here. I'm going to go over what I went under last time. I'm going to twist it at the end, and then I can take my loop and hook it on, and I'm gonna get it right over to this peg here that I need. And just pull it right on through. And I wanna make sure not to twist my loop. I want these to remain relatively flat. Because I want this color to look pop and uh, look nice and neat like these did. All right, and just pull it through to the other side and then pull it down. Okay. 
had a bit of a twist there, so I just played with it. And now I'm ready for the next one, and let me zoom back out. So you can see I had sort of set up um, what the next colors are going to be off to the side here, so I know that I need to do my two red next. And you can even kind of do that if you wanted to, but I think they kind of get in the way of each other. All right, so you can also do um, halfway instead of going from the very end. You would just need to make sure you're going um, under the one you went over last time. <clears throat> we go okay now you see how it's kind of uh, twisting here you want to make sure and pull it out so it's nice and flat So we're going to go under down here and I'm going to start using my hands after this because I want to show you that um, using your fingers is actually quicker. I just wanted to show what it looks like with this tool and this tool becomes more necessary down here when it's really tight. So this will move faster with my fingers right now and, and that's another thing that I like about this particular loom. Um, it spreads those out and I can get in between it. These loops are nice and thick. See how much faster that is? I can't wait to get this design done. It's so pretty. Okay, I'm on to my yellow. Be sure and uh, type in the comments and chat with each other. Um, I'm curious, uh, for Christmas, uh, do you guys use traditional colors for Christmas, or do you like to mix it up uh, every year? Or um, what's, your favorite, what's your favorite Christmas color palette in your house? Okay, notice I have two green and two red and now two yellow and this is exactly the same as up here I'm just repeating that pattern okay can you start to see that plaid popping in okay now we're going to be filling in with six of uh, the green It's a little, a little twisted, so I'm going to take that out. Okay. There we go. Next green. And then I will also show taking it off of the loom as well. So we'll do that after... All the colors are on here. Remember to keep going with your main color when you get to the middle. This is a great project to do during the holidays with family the kids. I like doing it myself. These are great gifts to give to people, to neighbors. You can bring over this. It's really a nice, uh, nice big one. It could function as a good um, trivet. It's made out of cotton, so it's not going to melt or burn. Don't do this with acrylic if you're intending it to use uh, for a hot pad. You want to use the natural fiber like cotton or wool. 
They are about seven and a half inches square and thicker than the regular uh, loops that you may see in the craft store. And this large part holder loom is 18 pegs across and down. I like the head uh, on these pegs too. They're so much better. <laughs> All right, so let me make sure I've got two, four, six. Okay, those are, that's the two green, the two red, the two yellow. And then I need two more green. I keep moving my greens over. <clears throat> The hot pad uh, starts off uh, this side. Oh, if you if you're curious, by the way, I've seen some comments on uh, size. So this measures on the inside here, um, from this loop to this one, it's about nine inches, and so it does shrink. Uh, it shrinks in about two inches on either side, or about an inch and a half. So um, you're seeing a bit of a gapping here, but it it will close in. So this is a this gives you an idea on size of how much it'll go in. So if you had a, pot, a lot of potholder looms start off about this size and then they come in like really small. So. Get me a pop of a tea uh, coffee here. <clears throat> Okay. Oh, this is so fun. See how that's coming together? And then uh, now I'm going to start in on um, my yellow. I want to mirror this, this yellow here. So I put that so you could make um, multiple of the same color if you want and then uh, stitch them together, uh, make um, three side by side, and making um, maybe some a longer trivet for um, a lo oblong dish or something, uh, maybe six together uh, for a nice little table uh, placemat or something in the middle, almost like a, a runner. Just different different things you can use it for. I think it'd be kind of fun if you um, did all the same colors but did different designs and made um, multiple ones to stitch together and everybody had their own special placemat. Um, also be great for kids, you know, and table setting. That'd be fun. All right, on to the red. The pricing works out. I remember when I did this, um, I bought uh, four packages of the, um, the you could make two uh, pot holders from one package from Cindy Wood Looms and buying four of them was like 40 US dollars. So they worked out to be about $5 each. I mean, plus the loom. But once you've got the loom, you just need to get the loops. You can also make loops Out of like old t-shirts and stuff. And if you ever have any uh, old t-shirt um, bed sheets, like some people have those. Um, I've had some rip on me before. Those would be good to um, remake into cotton loops or use for knitting or crochet. It would be a great use of them. Then you're not. Um, it's just it's just recycling in your own home. 
it doesn't have that look of recycling. It's not crafty looking. You're really reusing something for good use. So, All right, so we're coming near the end. This is getting tighter on my hands. You can see with my big stumbling fingers here, <laughs> it's a little tight. So I'm probably going to use the tool on the very last one. Uh, okay, so this one needs a little bit of a trim. And I used to be worried about this, but they're fine. They, they work out fine once they're all together in one uh, project. I don't worry about um, this extra. If there's um, a frayed spot, it'll be, it'll be fine once it's worked in. I am unafraid. But I'm pumped. Okay. <laughs> Bad joke. Bad joke. Okay. Let me turn this around. Isn't this fun? I love this. All right, I'm definitely going to use it. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to go ahead and go in. Let's see if I use this one. Go through these few. Okay. All right. All right, there we go. So in about 20 minutes time, I have put this on here. Probably take me less time if I wasn't sitting here jabbering on. <laughs> so uh, that's what this looks like still on the loom. Let's go ahead and start taking it off of the loom. And we just need a crochet hook. Yeah, that was fast, Oliver. <laughs> so you're just going to um, pick up on uh, the loop on the end here. And it's going to be making a crocheted edge. And so whatever color you see here is going to pop on the side here. So you have these V-shaped chain stitches. So we're going to pick one up. Let me zoom in on here. Okay. Pick the second one up. Just lift up and over. You can use your fingers to help. Up and over. Up and over so we're just have the loom I uh, have this loop on here and I just twisted it that's okay I'm gonna twist it around and see if I got it right okay so got it here we're just gonna go straight down take it off and then we're just pulling it on through okay coming down and pulling it on through and I'm gonna definitely use my fingers on this one So we're going to continue to have these uh, potholder videos every other week on our live episode and we'll have them start to replay soon on the YouTube channel. So if you end up watching this on YouTube later, know that this is a replay and thank you so much for joining me. Alright, so you can see how this chain edge has come out very nice. And then once we're done with one edge, we just turn and we move on to the next one and just go straight down. There's nothing fancy. Just go straight down in here and pull it over. Down and over. So you can see that the tension has been lost over here. You can uh, loop through one on the side and kind of pull the tension so that when you get to the other side, it's easier. Uh, if you don't do that, you just have to be careful that once you lose the tension on this side and this side, it'll start to get really loose towards the end here. 
and uh, you just want to make sure it doesn't pop off. But with this type of loom versus the mass produced ones at the store, you've got the higher pegs, plus you have the little head here. So they typically don't just fall right off. That's That's been my frustration with potholder looms in the past. And that's why I didn't do it for such a long time. And then when this came, when this one came out, I went, oh, well, this is like so much better. Uh, if you're curious about this company and you haven't seen it before, this is Cindywood Looms or Cindywood Crafts. They are also premiumknittinglooms.com, and they are handmade in the U.S. Uh, by family. <clears throat> they also do custom things. You can also get custom colored pegs. I just chose the tan color, um, but you can be fun and funky. I'm not being... <laughs> I try and be generic so that on film the um, the color of the yarn stands out prettier. So that's actually why I love Cindy Wood because you have a fun little choice that you could make. So that's kind of cool. So if you had kids and you wanted to give each kid their own loom, you could choose different pegs. So you could say, oh, this person has blue, this person has red, and so on. I forget what all the color of the pegs are. I think there's purple, green. All right, so now I've got the tension. Let me zoom out so you can see this. Okay, so you see how loose it's getting here. So once I get over here, it starts relieving this tension and it's harder to get into these loops. So the way to solve that is to take it and kind of attach one of these uh, loops over here and over here before I have actually kind of gotten this far. Um, I'm not going to attach them. I'm just going to let you see how it is when it's loose like this. And I do show that in uh, the very first video I showed how to... Uh, deal with the tension which is the one that looks like this so these are the other two that we've done there's also a different uh, plaid that we'll work on there's a, a few other ones that we're gonna do uh, in the coming weeks so you'll have plenty to do during the holidays making them all different trying to do it where you can, guys can see it and I can see it. This hook that I'm using right now is a Tunisian crochet hook. It's just, it's longer and it looks like a knitting needle on the end because it has this kind of flat end here. Um, it's actually my grandmother's. Uh, it doesn't come with the set. The other long hook that you see here did come with the set, uh, but I prefer a, a hook for this back, uh, for this ending part. You can also use yarn on these looms. Uh, you could do a continuous uh, loop method. And if you're doing a continuous loop method, you can actually just um, uh, weave in the two ends or tails and then pull it right off the loom. You actually don't have to do uh, this part of it, if it's one continuous strand. But then you would need this cool color combination. You could also um, do this combination with uh, different yarns and tie um, uh, tie them off at the ends and make little loops at the ends uh, and have, maybe have some fringe but you would definitely have to use this method if you did that so you're seeing me tug on it uh, and it's a tension issue because I like how these are nice and even when I had more even tension and then this one I've just kind of tugged on it down here and it's made that tension uh, easier and I can still tug on it after the fact Ugh. but see how it's it's a little harder to get to down here
if this was in my lap, <clears throat> and, and I'd probably have it like on my chest and this hanging down to use the weight of the fabric to kind of get in here better. I just can't do that on camera right now. So that would be a tip that you could do. All right, we're coming to our last few colors. Got the yellow. We've got two reds. And two greens. Last green. Okay. So I'm going to pull that on through. All right, and then we have this loop. And then, of course, you can um, go ahead and I suggest before doing anything with this, go ahead and pull out any of this tension here that you want to make sure and get. And then after you get it the way you want it, you can take this off. And now you can use this as a loop to hang it, uh, but I don't like doing that. Um, I want to have mine tucked in. So I go ahead and pull it on through. Uh, this one's going to go uh, through this loop here, the side loop the same. I'm going to pull it on through like that. And then I'm going to come through the next loop here and pull it down. And then I'm going to go through a like color and pull it through again. And then I'm going to hide it underneath this red color here, the little tip. I'm not cutting it at all. I've used no scissors on this project unless I was just cleaning up a little um, bitty snag here. So like this little part here, I just clean that up with my scissors. There we go. A cute plaid pot holder, three colors, has a little pinwheel look right here. Isn't that kind of fun? And there you go. So you could make multiple of these. You can flip the colors around. Uh, you could sew them together on the uh, edges here, um, whatever you like to do. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. We will have, uh, in a couple weeks, we'll do another live video on Friday. Um, our regular broadcast is on um, Fridays at 10 a.m. Central Standard Time uh, here at Good Knit Kisses. And we'll make another pot holder. And I'll join you next week uh, for more projects here at Good Knit Kisses. Uh, and let me look and see if we've got any questions that I have not answered. I think I got it all. We've got the link for the Cindy Wood Loom uh, in the comments. So if you're looking for the link for that, um, be sure and check that out. If you're looking for this um, this hook, it comes it comes with it, and it also will come with enough to make uh, uh, two two pot holders. Um, my original came with um, I, I made this one and this one, and then I bought packs to get these um, the uh, Tunisian hook that I used. Uh, this is from Boy. Um, it's an I. Uh, and it's a five and a half millimeter. This is not um, something I, I, I don't know because my grandmother bought this <laughs> like it's probably 50 years old. So um, this is this is something separate. You would get this uh, at another craft store or online or whatever. And um, yeah, so uh, Ma uh, Mary, if you just joined, we've got all the links down in the comments below. You should be able to click on them after unless you're on a desktop and you can probably click on them now. Um, and yes, I do have videos of doing uh, some continuous um, continuous strand weaving. It's actually on a triangle loom, but it's a similar process. And they wash up fine, um, Erica. So these are cotton. So you would just um, put them in your um, uh, put them in your washing machine. You could go ahead and throw them in on the gentle cycle if you're not sure about the color fastness of your t-shirts, then I would um, use a cup of vinegar and um, wash them with something um, uh, with light colors and uh, or you can wash them separate. But the vinegar helps set that in. So if you decide, hey, I wanted to dye up some specific stuff and you had some white cotton and you wanted to make different colors and stuff, I would set the colors in uh, first and then make the bands. And then they should just wash up with your regular um, kitchen towels. So um, yeah, I think that answered most all the questions. That loop, that loop ends up staying pretty good and tucked. If it came untucked, you can just tuck it right back in. Um, it shouldn't um, work its way out though. I haven't seen one work their way out yet. Um, yeah.
those are great questions. Thank you so much. I'm glad you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you have a great day and uh, be sure and check in our, our videos that come out this afternoon. Have a great weekend and we'll talk to you soon. Love your stitches. Bye everyone.